Hello everybody. Uh, this will be a super quick video about how to make um, bus cables for uh, something like a, a T-Track family of uh, modular layout or for home layout, anything where you need to make uh, kind of preset size buses uh, that are uh, interconnectable. So uh, this is the type of thing we're talking about. So. Uh, this is uh, just a bus section. This is uh, the length I like to uh, recommend people uh, build. It's a five foot length. I also build a lot of 10 foot lengths uh, with the uh, red and yellow uh, bundled in. Those are popular, people like those. So you would end up with uh, red and yellow bundled together you know, and in a longer length and people put the feeders into the cable. I like selling these in a shorter length. Uh, that way, um, well, these are a lot easier to build, so it's better for me. Uh, and the other thing is that the feeder sections, since they're separate, you can do cool stuff with them. You can flip them around. You can, uh, the feeder sections are, um, you can make them for different scales. So this is more generic. Uh, anyway, I like this type of length, but we're going to talk about how to make these real fast. Uh, I was making some up tonight for a customer and I uh, figured, you know, why not? I've got one more uh, cable length uh, to build, so we'll do it. Uh, what you're going to need? Uh, you are going to need. You're going to need cable. It needs to be pure copper, 12 gauge. You do not need the 12 gauge for amperage reasons. You could go with a lot smaller cable for the amperage you need. You need the 12 gauge because it has a really, really low resistance. What that means is that you're not going to drop your voltage. You can run this stuff for 40, 50, 60 feet, and not worry at all about voltage drop. That's why you need this thick cable. So a lot of people get confused and they get this and they think, oh, that's god awful huge cable. We don't need that. You do, if you're going to run any length, you'll end up dropping several volts over a 40, 50 foot length if you go any larger, uh, uh, larger gay, um, larger gauge number, smaller size than 12 gauge. If you go with a smaller cable, you're gonna have trouble. So uh, you need a pure copper um, 12 gauge cable. Um, I like using speaker cable. Uh, when you do speaker cable, make sure you it is pure copper. Make sure it's a reputable speaker cable that is pure copper. Uh, this stuff should cost close to 50 cents a foot, a little less in bulk. You're paying a lot less than 50 cents a foot. You probably are getting ripped off. You're getting aluminum, copper clad aluminum, which is uh, which is not as good. Uh, so I like speaker cable, um, you know, because it's it's uh, what they call zipper cable. It's two conductors together. Uh, it's got uh, usually a way to differentiate between the two uh, cables. It's fairly cheap. It's very flexible. This is very highly stranded, so it's. Uh, really nice goes around corners goes under modules and everything really well so uh, speaker cable pure copper 12 gauge all right so you need that uh, you are obviously going to need some um, power pole uh, Anderson power pole gear uh, so uh, these type of connectors uh, um, you'll see these more as I build the cable but you'll you'll need these uh, depending on what you're building right uh, uh, you always want um, a black connector and you want a color connector. Different people like different colors. Red and yellow is popular. You know, I also have uh, blue for the guys that like the, the white in them, blue. Uh, and I also do white and black for uh, accessory power. So I can build the same exact type cable with a different feeder section and do the 12 volt uh, accessory. So uh, they all are built with the same style bus uh, with this style. So you're gonna need the power pole pieces. So these are just the housings. These are uh, just what makes the cable click together. So uh, here's, sorry, I'm working behind the camera here, but this is how these plug in. They plug in like so. Now, these are uh, assembled in, an, in, in slightly different ways. If you notice here, the hood is up, color is up, hood is up. And on this side, color is up, hood is down. So one end needs to be hood up, one end needs to be hood down. And when you do that, they oppose when they connect, click together. So that's how these work. So you need the cover and you also need the metal crimp that goes on the wire. Now uh, they make these in different sizes. Uh, the only difference is, is the, the part that the wire goes in is a different size. So 
Uh, what I have in my hand here is the medium size. Uh, here's a small size if you're using tiny wire. Uh, and then I also use a uh, an open-ended uh, large uh, connector. Uh, this is when I'm making feeder cables because I put the larger wire plus whatever the feeder cable is together, twist them together, crimp this on top of it. So I need a really large end. But they all go in the same size housing. So you just need the housings for the colors you need and you need to pick the right size um, uh, crimp. So, uh, so these are the pieces that you'll need. Um, and you'll need some tools to um, make your work expedient. If you're making any number of bus wires, more than just one or two, you're going to need this guy. Uh, it's a, a cable lopper. Uh, you can put this around a cable, and it's easy. It just chops the cable cleanly in two. Like I said, if you're going to be doing this uh, much at all, you need this. Uh, you need a automatic wire stripper. Uh, I like this kind. This is my favorite kind. Uh, you put the wire, uh, you put the wire in here. You have a few adjustments, but after you get it set up, you just lay the wire in here up to this edge. See the wire goes in like this, and then you it, it grabs and uh, makes a cut, a tear, and rips the sheath off all in one one motion. So you just put the wire in, ka chunk, and when you let go, you'll have a stripped wire end with a little. Uh, piece of plastic that you throw away. Very handy, need that. Uh, the uh, last major tool you're gonna need, uh, and this is a specialty tool, but you need it if you're gonna be working with power poles, is you need a power pole crimper. So uh, power pole crimper, uh, it, uh, you have these, uh, these that you need to put on the ends of the wires. There are some people that solder these. Uh, I have a, a friend of mine, he's actually bought some parts off of me. He prefers soldering. You can do that. Uh, with these circular enclosed type of uh, ends like this, uh, you can put the wire in and solder it. Uh, it's, I think it's less efficient, probably takes you a little longer, and then you have a weak spot where that wire bends. I don't really like it, I don't do it, but you can if you, if you have the enclosed type. If you use the open crimps, you can't solder this. You have to crimp this, all right? So this tool you need a specific tool for these uh, power pole crimps. Uh, it's three different sizes for the different size crimps. Uh, I'm working with the middle size one here. I'll show you how these work in just a minute. Um, and then the only other thing you uh, kind of need is you need a little something. It could be just any kind of little screwdriver. Once in a while, when you put these in, this wire is super, super flexible and soft. And when you put this interior piece with the crimped on piece, sometimes when you put it in, it it um, does not pop through, it doesn't snap in, and you need this to, to push the little end and push it through and click it through. Again, I'll show you, I'm gonna assemble one of these. I've got, I've got one cable to build, I wanna show you how that's built. So, um, so we talked about the tools, we talked about the material. So uh, let me grab my, this. so uh, this is a five foot length that I have pre-cut. Um, just gonna do one end, because this video is already, running, uh, it's already eight minutes long, so I know people have short attention spans, so. Uh, this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is an additional tool I didn't mention. Uh, you, uh, to make things a little easier on yourself, you need uh, a flush cutter to cut the zip wire apart in the middle here. You can also use a hobby knife or whatever you have handy, but again, if you're gonna do this a lot, you have some flush cutters, uh, so. Use flush cutters to start a tear in the zip and just pull this apart. This stuff's soft, so it's easy to pull apart. Um, and then you will put this through here. Uh, you'll have to play with the settings on this, uh, this, but once you have this set and you understand how it works, it's very easy. So you just put that through and then just snap it apart and it will pull the sheath right off. And there goes the plastic piece. So there you go. There's a, there's a, a, a quickly stripped uh, end. So just twist this over uh, so that all the strands are uh, tied together and it's real tight. And then I'm doing this behind the camera, so bear with me. Um, put this on. Uh, 12 gauge is the limit for these medium size connectors and I am making a mess of this. It's just due to working behind the camera. Um, let's see if I can put this on decently. Nope, not gonna be able to, gosh. 
it's hard to do with the uh, phone in front of you. It's a bit of a, a learned technique. Here we go. Once in a while, you'll get a single strand that sticks out. If you do, one strand's okay. You're not going to miss it. Snip out real fast. All right. Uh, so uh, to make this uh, work better or work smoother, you need to think about how these are going to be oriented. This this lump on, uh, on the top here is uh, the hood is going to be on top if this this uh, contact is up here. If this is turned around this way, then the hood is going to be on the bottom. So you need to think about where your hood's going to be. So. Uh, I'm going to do hood on top, so color on top, hood on top. This, the darker, I use the darker wire is always the black. The lighter color is going to be my color. And I'm going to do hood on top. So, um, there's the crimping tool. So here's the crimping tool. Sorry, it's going to be a little awkward. I'm going to um, stick this in here in this tool and then it's going to ratchet together all the way down you let it go open up and there's your crimped power pole connector it's solid it's not going anywhere that's all you got to do uh, put the put the crimp on there as far as it goes it has a stop at the end and then put the whole thing in the tool grab the tool down all the way the tool does have a, a tension adjustment so when you first get the tool you may have to play with it a little bit but mine's already tuned in so uh, here's the here's the outlet and here's your crimped uh, end remember the lump and the hood the lump and the hood up okay so you put that in now it has to go in the right way and you'll feel it lock in when it goes the right way and then you just push and it makes a little snap and that's it and you'll do the same for the bottom so there'll be a red and a black when you get to the other end this is the other end of the cable I'm going to do this one hood up right hood up color up the other side needs to be color up hood down so let's look at the finished cable one more time so this is the color up hood up blacks on the bottom and then the other end is color up, hood down, black on the bottom. So do your cables like that, and that's it. So uh, again, I like building these as bare bus sections. The feeder sections separate. They're easiest to build that way. They're more modular. Uh, but the concept applies if you're doing a red and yellow pairing. Um, let's see. So if we had a red and a yellow, and I, I, I don't know... Um, I don't have it in front of me, which is which, uh, if it's uh, left or right. But I look at the T-Track guide. The T-Track, uh, Terry's T-Track guide has it. But if you have red and yellow bundling, then you just slide the two together. And once those are slid together, they're quad. And then, so uh, you have to remember your hood orientation and which way the yellow and the red goes. I just use the pictures in Terry's T-Track guide. Um, that's really it. So if you're gonna bundle them together, you do this. Uh, they typically are gonna be 10 foot in length if you're gonna do this bundling with the feeders and the cable. And then you might put a nice cable loom around this. Um, and uh, these, you're gonna to wanna to put these on here for the 10 foot cable guys. You'll put these, these hoods on. Uh, these hoods uh, go on before you put any of the cables together. So, uh, these go on like so you put these all the way through you put all four conductors through and then you reassemble them on the other end you reassemble them and then slide them back down and then there is a uh, a roll pin that assembles here and you'll have to look at another sample cable there's too much for me to go into this video is already 14 minutes long uh, but uh, yeah so these hoods and the pins go in so um, you know, little little tricky, little, little tools involved, but uh, that's pretty much it. So, uh, you know, you need to have your power pole kit, uh, and, you know, I have a bin full of bin and bags and materials all around. Uh, but that's it. That's what you need. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Sorry the video is so long, but hopefully you'll get some good out of it. Thanks.